scrappy parts. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, all right, we're just working on the machining. I couldn't do everything at Best Tech, so I called up a friend, and we're using his shop to get a lot of the parts done. So I'm just checking on them. Super excited, crazy lightweight little parts for my wing. Um, things right here. One side is not done, this off is done. We've got to flip it around, make a fixture. We'll cut the back of this side. Over here, we've got some more of the components. These are ready to go. These are ready to go. All the ops are done. So we're getting there, getting closer. We've got a few more on this table. I'm gonna go check those out, but I'm super excited. The wing is finally into kind of the high production phase of all the little parts I need to build this crazy wing. So uh, I'm pumped. These ones are half done. We gotta do another off on the back side, so a lot of cleanup to do. These are the little bell crank pivots that pivot on a bearing that move all the internal components. So they're getting closer, a different shape uh, uh, push rod connector. Good thing I had a little bit of help because Best Tugs is absolutely slammed trying to get all the tugs out that all of you have ordered from us. So thank you for all of you moving your aircraft with Best Tugs. Thank you for being part of the Best Tugs family. So uh, anyway, we're happy to have good friends helping us out here to get all my stuff done. Let's get back to work. I know I gotta put the rest of the ribs in, but <laughs> I wanted to play. That is so awesome. I'm so happy right now. All right, when you drive anything in a computer, it should be accurate <laughs> to the third decimal. And uh, we just assembled the wing for the first time. We haven't uh, riveted the skins or everything in place exactly, but they are exactly where all my machine alignment ticks are. And uh, I just put on the flap that was made earlier and every hinge bracket was perfectly lined up. So that is the start. <laughs> Let's yank it off and get it painted. Back to work.
All right, guys. Getting ready to do another section of the wings. This is the next rib that goes in, which I'm really excited about. Now, I was always wanting to see the raw aluminum. So there is a clear coat sealer. I felt more comfortable using the other because it's more tried and true, but I really wanted to have at least one and all the custom parts on it, anodized in different colors. So I'm gonna do one bay in the middle of the wing that the inspection doors can be transparent sheets. So you can look up inside and see how everything works. So this one is for this side, this wing. I'll do the same in the other wing and everything around it will be colored and anodized. So let's stick it in, get back to work. All right, so another thing that's it's really hard to see, but on these ends, there's actually a movement where the arc comes and then makes a little bit steeper dive. That little steeper dive is so that when the slat moves out, it doesn't drag on the paint. It actually has to lift first and then transitions its shape and movement. So little details, but I don't want to scuff my paint. So we designed it into the mechanism to prevent it. All right, guys, we're getting closer every day. I just finished putting on the back skins between the tank and my Keller flaps from Airframes Alaska. And I put two 90 degree bends, one on each end, plus the bend that is the shape of the back where the air flows up to go over the flaps. But these little 90 degree bends make so much difference. A lot of times it's just left flat right there and just that little teeny bit more work makes it so that between the ribs as you're coming around bends, typically that's where you'll see them wave and then you're trying to connect another piece that wants to wave to it. And it's hard to get a really perfect line. I mean, it works fine, but this little simple step of putting this bend on here makes this so strong that when I bring the other side around and hook to it and I run the rivets together, there's absolutely no way for that sheet to wave. So it's a little more work, 10% across the whole wing, but every single joint, whatever is the underside skin has got a return on it and it's flattening out all the seams. So every now and then I go, is it really worth it? But I think it is, <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going. On the top here, you can see I've returned the 90s here, just like I did back here. So every other joint or every joint, one of the joints has a 90 degree bend on it. It is going together so perfect. And I was a little bit afraid. Usually I put a lot bigger tolerances on fitting a wing together. And I thought, I'm gonna try something a little different. And that's put really tight tolerances every single hole in. But then because I have machined ribs instead of stamped or pressed, which sometimes have not quite 90 degree angles, I hope this keeps going like this. I'm waiting for the bomb to drop. Call Kenny Loggins, cause you're in the danger zone <sighs> from Top Gun. And then all the holes so far have lined up perfectly. I'm now one, two, three, four, five, six skins connected all the way around. I'm all the way back to the front. Every one of them were a laser set hole that I just go through and drill out to the next size for the rivet. So. Hopefully it keeps going over here on this wing and kind of see it's coming together as well. And then if you look, come on down here, you can see even the, every single rib, every edge of every skin all the way around is exactly lining up. There's no trimming, no overhang anywhere. I'm tired, it's late Sunday night or I don't know, it might be Monday morning. <laughs> I'm tired, guys. Let's get back to work. I got a little more in me. Isn't that cool? So far, we started with this bottom skin that starts tucked up around all 
of the ribs. Not one hole that I have to adjust or, or open up to get every single one of the original smaller size clicos in. And this is what's amazing. And those of you that done sheet metal will appreciate it doesn't always work out this way. <laughs> um, sorry. But starting from here and going to the back and all the way back to the front and then look at the tolerance on all of these notches preset going down the top. Um, it's come all the way back full square and every hole is spot on, every rib is spot on. Um, I think I've said it before, that extra 10% is like 90% better. And on this assembly, it's going that way because so far every skin, the thick and even the thin skin, every one of them are so perfectly true. Now to make that happen, I had to take a big risk. You have to make sure that each shop is running the same temperature, give or take a, a maximum temperature spread and specifically on the skins to be able to do this. I even went down there and got out the sheets that were sitting in the sun, cooled them all off with a garden hose, then put them back in the shop, dried them off, and then wouldn't let them run them until I gunned the sheets of aluminum to make sure that their complete expansion and contraction was stabilized and the shop I'm using had to be a temperature controlled shop. I didn't want a shop that could be hot on one day and cold on another. So that kept my tolerances right. And to give you an idea of how much movement that can be, on a given night today with the kind of heats we're getting right now, just temperature if they ran the parts from sitting outside on an early morning or whether it was late afternoon when it was hot, one sheet of my wing skin could be 3 sixteenths of an inch. So you can imagine trying to do this and match set laser rivets if they were done at different times of the day, both in the machine shop on all my milled rips and specifically on the skins, trying to get them to pair back up after you do five different parts, come back around to a perfect mating. So that's a whole lot of talking. My arms are tired from drilling. Let's do a bunch more. We got more in us. Back to work. All right, we're starting to put the last skin on for trial fit. And I've been checking the tolerance as you come around the corner and it's just chasing the edges. Absolutely perfect. And then to see how well it might meet around the other side. So we started at the front, we grabbed all the way around. Now we're coming back to the front. I put in these clicos into their location holes. You can see that that is lining up absolutely perfect still. And then, the cross check to see how we're doing as we come back around to meet the skin on the other side is this little tab, which is this one. This machine, machine step right there is hiding under here. And this skin should, when pressed down, land right on it. And if you look close, that is within a thousand or two thousandths of an inch. I can't even feel a variance. So, to have that many parts, that many custom bends and shapes at the back and come around. Our luck's holding out. We'll see if the rest of the wing goes this good, but so far so good. No trimming, no fitting, just opening up the holes and setting it. So, back to work. <laughs> I gotta get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, getting closer on more skins. I'm just getting ready. I've just been spraying quick spray paint dots all over the parts here and on the floor because there's right and left sides and mirrored images for the two different wings. So I'm just label them, labeling them all. Now I can alcohol them, clean them off, then I'm gonna go through and sand them really well, then coat them to protect them, then flip them and then sand the other side so it's pre-prepped for the paint. A lot of times people like to wait until after they get all the rivets in and then they go through and sand or try and scotch bright around the rivet heads. And there's just no way to really get right inside that little corner around any type of raised rivet. Uh, you can do it with the flush, but even then, you're better off to sand and get all the texture you want for your paint first. So I'm gonna pre-prep for paint right now, coat one side, sand the other. That way when the rivets go in, I don't have to worry about getting in those tight little corners and later, five, 10, 15 years from now, having that paint 
pop it off around the rivet head. So I got a bunch of diesel get installed. Everything's pre-done, crazy lightweight. These are my inspection doors. So let's coat them, put some doors in. Back to work. <laughs> All right, guys, I just stopped by the hangar. Mike's out of town today, but I noticed that we are ready to get all of these doors installed. We got our sheets of aluminum to put them on. There's about 60 of them. I can show you all those sheets right there. There's about 60 doors that need to be put on. And so I thought to myself, well, I'll throw them together. It'll take probably 12 hours to do, but, um, I'll get him done. He'll be surprised. One last thing to tackle, and then I'll head to the lake. Anyways, back to work. All right, so these two slats, I didn't want a big bracket hanging under the wing, so these actually pass through each other and then reshape so the front of the wing is small and flat. When it goes into slow flight mode, it reshifts and droops and then moves out. So something like that. These right here are the receivers that capture the carbon fiber slats. So these will get attached like that. And the slats themselves, rather than just having little screws or rivets into them, go into a pocket so that you can't pull them out and it's not just attached with some screws. Into the black hole. Full saw, duct tape to a pipe, and a drill. <laughs>